Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Um, I'm covering for Pastor David due to a death in his family and uh, his uncle in Chicago. So a uh, pastor will be back in the office uh, shortly. Uh, several uh, announcements. There's been a change in the new member orientation. It has been switched to October 31st, next Sunday, between the services or November 1st at 6.30 uh, via Zoom. If you'd like to uh, attend the Lutherans linger longer, there's an assignment for you uh, to bag popcorn uh, today, and unfortunately I can't read the fine print here, but <laughs> this, I, let me try it. Okay, uh, the YMCA Trunk or Treat is today, and uh, this congregation is handing out popcorn, but it needs to be bagged, so if you could uh, spare a few minutes for that, it would be good. The Academy Trunk or Treat is this Friday, the 29th. Uh, contact Jenny in the office if you're able to participate and the lot on 22nd Street is uh, something about next Sunday. <laughs> Whatever. The quarterly congregational meeting is Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, the 26th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And if you have not filled out your intent card, you know, the old days it was a pledge card. We call them intent cards uh, today. Please fill one out. Uh, October, youth on their own. We are collecting new men's and women's socks for youth on their own. There's a bin in the Narthex gathering area for your donations. Next Sunday is a blood drive, 8 to 1. Uh, you can schedule an appointment at redcross.org and use our zip code for that. And finally, uh, white Christmas. Christmas is coming uh, sooner rather than later. And there's going to be a musical, White Christmas, the musical, December 3rd and 19th. And uh, Aaron Rice is the music director. And uh, they're asking for sponsors of musicians. Please see Al Steichen uh, if you're so uh, interested in sponsoring that. Okay, please rise for the order for confession, con uh, confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. <clears throat> we gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to 
us now, and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the proud and the strong, give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be song for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place a new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all oh peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bones. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At uh, this time, uh, any kids want to come up for a message? There we go. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, today in the Bible reading, we're going to hear about how Jesus healed a blind person. So we're going to try to act like we're blind. So what I want you to do is to cover your eyes. Can you cover your eyes? Okay. What do you see? Okay. We can't see, can't, we can't see a whole lot. And this morning when I got up, I tried to tie my shoes with pretending I was blind. It was really difficult. And I can't imagine if we were really blind, how we would get up from these steps and walk down on the, on, the, on the regular carpet. So what Jesus did was a very wonderful thing in healing the man whose name is Bartimaeus. And we want to remember that Jesus today can open our eyes. And what I mean by that is that Jesus helps us to see each one of us as a child of God, and that we can take care of each other. And that's the message that Jesus wants us to learn each and every day that we are in contact with him. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being the healer, for opening our eyes to the presence of other people who might need our help, and help us also to receive the help that others offer us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can open your eyes, and you can safely go down the steps now. Okay. 
and let us turn to our lessons. The first reading is from Jeremiah 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to uh, join me with the psalm response, uh, reading the bold print. This is from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 46th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The blind man said to Jesus, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Some of the most touching things that Jesus did was to allow people to see again. I distinctly remember my maternal grandmother who suffered from diabetes and how she had to feel her way around a kitchen she practically lived in, who had to give up reading her favorite newspaper, who couldn't write letters anymore to the sisters and family she left behind in Europe so having this personal experience of a blind person in my family, Jesus' healings of blind people are meaningful to me on a much deeper level. He would often restore the afflicted to health and wholeness. We might remember the extended story of a man born blind in John's Gospel, 
or the twofold attempt to heal another blind man earlier in Mark. But what is different in today's gospel reading is this. The blind man Bartimaeus could once see. He asked Jesus, let me see again. He who once saw the glory of a rainbow or the glow of the sunset, the smile on people's faces, at one point lost that gift of sight. And so there can be no doubt that when asked what his heart's desire was, he asks to have his sight, his sight restored, which Jesus does. We might mention this story marks the end of Jesus' public ministry because the next action in Mark's gospel takes place on Palm Sunday, and we all know too well how that week ended for Jesus. Betrayal, condemnation, being nailed to a cross, dead, laid in a stone-cold tomb. Up to this point, he predicted not once, not twice, but three times that he would be put to death. And yet, having that dreadful knowledge over him, he could still reach out in compassion and mercy to heal. And what a blessing that is. After all, Jesus began his ministry with the proclamation, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. He begins and ends his public ministry demonstrating that in God's kingdom, there is wholeness and grace, compassion and healing. And in spite of his upcoming torment and death, he puts aside his own agenda for the sake of another. But let's not hear this story as a quaint action of a bygone day and age, good for telling, but sadly without meaning for you and me. We who suffer in our own personal ways. God's kingdom is at hand right now in our very own lives. So we too can ac access the wholeness and grace, compassion and healing that Jesus embodies. <clears throat> to do that, we are called to reclaim the gift of God's promises in our baptism. As Luther knew so well, it is sometimes so easy, so convenient to fall away from God's kingdom. Then we withdraw from God. It's not that God ever withdraws from us. <clears throat> the scriptures proclaim it so well. To move away from God is to move towards the darkness of life, the darkness of our souls, if you will. There we cannot see the goodness of God, the goodness of God that dwells in other people, and that darkness prevents us from seeing the goodness of God that dwells in us. We too become blind, as it were. We too then need to have our sight restored. I find it telling that when blind Bartimaeus gets wind of the approach of Jesus, he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy is the same cry we on occasion sing when we sing the Kyrie in our service of worship. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy, is a plea to Jesus to open our eyes to what it means to continue to live in God's light. We acknowledge that we often fall short of God's intent, and we are invited back into the one relationship that never fails us, the gift of Jesus for daily living. We prayed it in today's prayer of the day. Enable us to reflect your goodness. That goodness is left out in the calling to be instruments of God's abundant grace. It answers the question of the ages, Am I my brother's keeper? Cain tried to dance around the issue after he murdered his brother Abel, knowing full well that yes, each of us in turn is called to act lovingly towards the neighbor. To regain one's sight is to realize once again that yes, each of our actions has consequences for other human beings. Doing something 
or not doing something affects others. It's also telling that Jesus commends blind Bartimaeus for his faith. Go, your faith has made you well. This is an act of pure grace, for Bartimaeus could do nothing whatsoever to gain Jesus' favor. Faith that makes well is also faith that saves, for the word well has that double meaning in the New Testament. Faith can only receive the gift of God in Christ Jesus, and faith can only approach God with empty hands, as Dr. Luther explained. Realizing that we are totally dependent on God's grace for living with purpose and meaning is faith that trusts, and this Bartimaeus demonstrated. And his receiving the healing touch of Jesus not only gave him back his sight, we might say a proper perspective on who he was when touched by God, Jesus' touch also gave him the courage to follow Jesus. So far from being a quaint story of sight restored to a beggar 2,000 years ago, the story of blind Bartimaeus is our story too. We live surrounded by the gospel, the good news of God's kingdom. And yet life tears us away from that perspective, drawing us further and further away from God's intent for us to live as servants of our neighbors and indeed the entire creation. We become blinded to the, to the gifts of the kingdom in our very midst. You know, it's so easy to put ourselves in survival mode, what with all the terrible things that happen all the time in the world. We often fear for our own safety, and that can be overwhelming at times, I know. Just trying to navigate a worldwide disease these past 18 months has been brutal. But we dare not let the things of the world tear our eyes off from God and God's promises. To do that is to allow the darkness of fear and ignorance to engulf us. Perhaps the psalmist said it best, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Thanks be to God for giving us Jesus, the merciful son of David, who gives light to our darkened minds and opens our hearts to eternal truth. You are loved just for who you are, and may you share that love with others. That's approaching life with wide open eyes, seeing the world as God sees the world, as an object of love. Amen.
Join me as we confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn now to the prayers of the people, and each petition will be followed by a sung response, O Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Let us pray for all those needing health and healing, especially Frank, John, David, Albert, Bob, Judy, Angie, Lynn, Jack, Anne, Ryan, and Jerry. O Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those dealing with cancer, especially Shirley, Jeannie, John, Hal, John N., Robin, J.R., Heidi, Susan, Barb, Kay, and Dan. O Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Tom Rudd, Joe Lamb, Judy Weigert, Kenya Harding, Carrie Gardner Mack, Bobby Dietrich, John Herbert, Savannah Narcarati, Jim Pavisic, and Ron Kawahani, uh, friends of Pete Peterson, and we pray especially for the two sons, Bradley and Rodney. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Pray for those facing tragedies near and far, man-made and natural, for those facing housing, food, health care, and financial insecurity, for those facing persecution because of who they are, faith, 
as to ethnicity, gender, sexuality, background. For families in crisis and those feeling alone and isolated. For the quick and safe distribution of vaccines. For those dealing with health care shortages due to COVID. Care, compassion, justice, and peace for all. For those who are known only to God that are on our hearts right now. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. midst of our heavy hearts as we pray for those who suffer, we also look to the signs of your light and life among us, and we celebrate this week the birthdays of Joanne Miller, Phyllis Rasmussen, Anna Cedar, Jenny Pavisic, Joan Swanson, Barbara Fuhr, Mary Havenhill, and Kevin Nealon. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace with one another. The offering can be collected in the uh, basin and the narthex. And just to remind you, there are various electronic uh, ways of giving also. And for those of you uh, worshiping online through Zoom or Facebook, we are now coming to the communion part of our service. You are certainly uh, invited to participate, uh, have a glass of juice or wine and a simple cracker available for you. And you are, even though there's distance, you are still participating in the body of Christ. Please rise. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. <clears throat> Accept the gifts you have first given us, 
Unite them with the offerings of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gathered around the throne of grace, we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our bread of life, our table and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the, grace, the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So at this point, I'm going to ask the communion assistants to come up. Uh, as you are ushered through the, down the center aisle, uh, there'll be two of us distributing the host. Go to the side, and there are pre-filled uh, cups with uh, juice in it. Please be seated. <laughs>
Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Popcorn. Okay. Okay. <laughs>